Welcome, everyone, to Being at Home with George during COVID. I'm excited, as usual, to be here with you and to talk about creating the possibility of being able to embrace the hurt, the pain, and generate the hope. And it's more of a yes and rather than a, a either or. So it's not like, okay, we're stuck in pain and, and we got to be able to hold both. And it's also helpful to remind us to make the shift from doing to being because a lot of us are not doing what we're accustomed to doing. And when there's a lot of uncertainty about what we're going to be able to do. So focusing on being so that when we are able to do, we hit the ground running with both feet. So when I talk about being, I'm talking about being hopeful, being optimistic about ourselves in the future and seeing about finding the silver lining in the clouds. And I'm talking about having faith and doing the work based on the faith, having the faith to make the effort and to be kind, to be loving, to be curious, to be courageous, and to be in uh, what I call the, the growth mindset and seeing well, what are the lessons here? What do I have to learn? And so I had to deal with this this week. We had kind of like a storm. I, don't, I won't call it a storm surge, but we had strong winds and and rain. And the main thing was the winds knocked down tree branches in front of the house. And I have a big oak tree in the back of the house. And and it got uprooted. So the tree is just hanging by a slither. I mean, the whole ground, it's, you know, it's, I guess the roots were, were, were shallow. So I have this hanging tree and it was, it's kind of just hanging in limbo there. So I was concerned about that. And at the same time, we had that, those strong winds and that, that little storm, it didn't last maybe even 10 minutes. Uh, we lost power for 19 hours. So I was without power and had a tree hanging by its roots and and not having lights in the house and and having to deal with that and still stay present and of course i've had all these activities and things that i had to do so i had to really practice this by embracing yeah okay this is what's happening and what can i do about it so i went out and i went to to the store and i got lights and flashlights and everything so we had lights and I made a few phone calls to the tree service and one guy, it's interesting because now I had to worry about um, conserving my phone, you know, the power of my phone and other devices wasn't able to do anything, but couldn't watch the debates or anything like that. So it was just really a, a challenge. And at the same time, I, I had podcasts every day. I had one earlier that day. I had a podcast the next day, which was yesterday, and I had to do all of these things as well as, as keep up with my clients and all of the other work that had to be done. And when you know it, I we got to a point where I said, okay, so maybe I got a message saying that it may take till Friday before the power is back on. So I went online and I got a hotel room in the next town over and I booked it for one night. Then when I found out it might be two nights, I booked it for a second night, and then as soon as I booked it, the lights came on, like miraculously, all of a sudden the lights were on, and I said, wow, this must be, this is like, I, I felt like I just died and went to heaven. Oh, man, this is great, just having the lights, the, the gratitude of just having light, being in light, that's a metaphor to being in darkness and waiting for the light, I imagine, and the whole thing with the tree uh, making arrangements for folks. I interviewed four different folks. I got one guy who wanted to charge me on the lake because it was, it was an emergency and he tried to get me to give him a, you know, pay him a deposit and I had to challenge him on that. And then he showed up this morning and he was, he wasn't really who he say he was. He didn't come with the equipment and he made up some excuse where he wanted me to, uh, actually pay a lot of money for the tree and then only take away two thirds of it instead of taking the whole thing down. He didn't want to deal with the roots. And even though the roots were upended and, and you have to deal with that. And I just got to a point where I just said, no, it's not going to work. And I was frustrated. And then when I thought about it, I started reflecting and I realized I probably dodged a bullet because he was, he wasn't prepared for it. And so I decided that I was going to go with a reputable 
uh, firm. And so I made some more calls. And, and actually, I called the gentleman that called me bef- the first time that came by the night of. But he has so many other clients that he wasn't able to do it for a couple of weeks. And I don't think that tree, even though he told me the tree would be fine, it looks like it's, it's hanging by a thread. And so I had to deal with that. So the lights coming on really helped and I was able to do more. But now I'm back into the process of calling people and everyone's busy and trying to, and I'm, I'm not trying, I'm maintaining the faith and continuing to, I took pictures and send it to folks. But it's a challenge. And at the same time, I got clients to see, I got things to do and being able to embrace that and not say this shouldn't be happening. It's happening. And I have to deal with it. And how do I deal with it? And that's not even talking about COVID. And on top of it, I should have known something because when, when the man that I hired, he, did, he wasn't wearing a mask. <laughs> so I should have known something was up. But I had my mask on and then all of the other potential uh, folks that were going to support me with the, with the tree, they had masks on. And so we chatted. And so I decided to do what I know to do and, and wait for the next step. But me being compassionate, being kind, being hopeful. And I am hopeful, uh, even though I have a little concern because I don't want that tree to fall on my house or my neighbor's house or on someone's car. And so that's the challenge. And I believe that that we get confronted with with all of these sorts of of challenges. And so for me, it's really understanding that there's always something. So what's the being in a growth mindset and saying, okay, that didn't work, back to the drawing board. And it's okay, and it's going to be okay, even though it may not feel that when I look at the tree and see that you can actually see underneath it, and you can see where there was some a rock that prevented the, the, the roots from going down so far. But it, I'm grateful because it could have been during a snowstorm, or it could have been when I was away, and so things sort of work out. But it's it's always coming back to how am I being? Can I be kind? Can I be calm? Can I be resourceful? Can I be hopeful? Can I generate optimism? Like it's going to work out. I don't know how. And I'm grateful I have the money. It's going to be an expense that wasn't foreseen. But at the same time, I'm happy that I have the resources. It just so happens that I got a, that some money came in, you know, from my <laughs> got a royalty check. So that kind of helps. So uh, things are, are fine. And I just want to encourage us. And it's interesting because when I was growing up, when someone was acting unreasonable or acting a little crazy or out of their mind, we used to say, or somebody would say, like this guy would say, hey, I, I got a great deal for you. This is, you pay me this and I'll give you that. And we would say, you're, instead of saying you're crazy, we would say, you're out of your tree. You must be out your tree. And so to me, this whole metaphor of tree and the roots are uh, not holding. It, it says a lot about us. It says a lot about me, about what are my roots, what's keeping me grounded. And that is, is, is generating hope, but at the same time, being able to be so rooted that I can, I can sustain the winds. I can sustain the gust that may blow me over, but maybe I can be more like a pine tree. So even though I've been or bamboo tree, I've been, I come back. I don't break. I just go with the, the wind. So to me, that's the metaphor is, you know, we get knocked down, we get up. Uh, we're still in COVID. We're still uh, uh, in in social distancing. And we don't know how long it's going to last. But at the same time, if I can just manage the day and do what I know to do today and just continue to focus on being, working on my inner life, working on the things that I'm not able to work on under normal circumstances. And for some families, that means getting to know each other a little bit better, even though we may be more more intimate physically than we would like to be, use a little space, we can still learn how to get that, um, the silver lining in the cloud or what is, what, what is it we can do now that we wouldn't ordinarily do and how can we focus and develop ourselves or get to know ourselves more and understand how I can be more kind, more courageous, even when people are coming at us in ways that are not respectful or may even be deviant. So when I reflect on the situation I'm dealing with, not that I've dealt with it, but I'm continuing to deal with the tree, is uh, I believe it was Nietzsche that said, that which does not kill me makes me stronger. And so in terms of resilience, in terms of 
embracing the hurt or embracing the tree is falling, not the sky, but the tree is falling. It may feel like the sky is falling, but the tree is falling. And how do I relate to that in a way where I can, where I can generate um, the hope and also the growth mindset takes me into this process where it says, okay, there's a lesson here. Uh, how can I relate to this in a way that empowers me and makes me stronger? It makes me more resourceful so that I actually develop what they call a strong, uh, a strong sense of self-efficacy, this ability to, to understand that no matter what happens, if I can create space between stimulus and response and that space, I can make wise choices that enhance my being, enhance my strength, enhance my, my quality of life. Because even if I make a mistake, there's a lesson there for me to learn. It's telling me what I need to learn and practice. And maybe I wasn't being present or maybe I wasn't being as hopeful or maybe I wasn't being patient enough to not get, you know, and that's the lesson. Instead of getting the first person that can do the job in a timely manner, just really wait and, and really weigh all of the things because I didn't think about things like, do they have um, liability insurance? Uh, do they have the proper gear to be able to do it? Uh, is this something they do all the time? And they have um, references and that sort of thing. But when we're, when we're in an emergency, there's not a lot of space between stimulus and response. And so... It is really more about uh, reflecting and thinking, but I could have used a little bit more patience in that situation. And now I'm, I'm working on that, and that's going to make me stronger. And the next time it happens, I'll be ready. I'll be more ready than I was this time.